Hey man, today I want to talk to you about shipping your product to your customer. This is by far the most asked question I get is how to ship the products. We'll go over the services we use to help reduce the cost of shipping for us, as well as packaging, branding, labeling, everything you need to know that we do. Let's go. If you found cheaper services to ship and or package your products, please let us know in the comments below. That way everyone gets benefit. First, I'll tell you about our packaging, what we're using, what we've learned so far, and what works for us. There's various ways to package a product. For the most part, we get most of our shipping supplies on Amazon. I'll link everything we use in the description so you'll be able to easily find it. These are very inexpensive bubble mailers. In other words, they're about 15 by eight inch. I think they're number five envelopes is what they call them. They're padded with bubbles, so you don't have to worry too much about damage. It's kind of a little bit of a protection. For a little more protection, we got bubble wrap. I've got I ordered this in rolls of four. There's four rolls, I think 100 feet each that last quite a long time. And this gives it a little added protection. These are 5 8 inch bubbles. And of course, clear packing tape. You can get labeled packaging tape, but this really works best on cardboard boxes. Uh, this comes from Sticker Mule, by far my favorite sticker and labeling service so far. And I'll tell you about some downfalls of that in a minute. In my opinion, being able to ship small packageable items is a profitable way to benefit your business. And that's where today's sponsor, Carbide 3D, comes in because they offer a full line of Shapeoko CNC's. You're able to create custom projects and that's what a lot of people are after now. They want the customization that's offered through CNC, like this baseball art that I made, custom catch trays, or even repeatable stuff like the mallet templates. And if you've never had a CNC, that's where Carbide really shines because they have so many resources available to get you started if you're starting from zero and know nothing. Go to my.carbide3d.com right now and you can see that you can actually take the courses and learn how to operate the software and the machine before you ever get it. And should you get stuck, Carbide3D's amazing support is always there to help you get over the hump. And what I really appreciate about Carbide 3D Machines is everything you need to get started is included. You're gonna get the dust management accessories, you're gonna get work hold down, you're gonna get your router, you're gonna get the CNC, you're even gonna get some router bits to get you up and going as soon as you get your machine. If you wanna learn more about the full line of shape Oco CNCs, go to carbide3d.com, check them out for yourself. In this case, the customer has ordered one can of our board butter, so I like to take that and wrap it in one of the bubble wraps. Once it's safe and secure in there, I'll take the packet slip, insert it into the package, as well as a list of instructions for applying the board butter and some of the common uses. Number 731 has come up with these 731 survival kits. And what these are is just kind of a, a way to connect with your customers and to make them smile. It's kind of bringing them something happy in their day. There's a, one of our stickers are in there, a couple of other things that she has listed here. It's a really cool little surprise that they get when they get our packages. Now that one's ready for mail. Now, when somebody receives that, that's gonna be cool. They're gonna see the wanted poster. Curiosity's gonna get them. It's a branding message. I started a second channel called MadOutlawYouTube.com slash MadOutlaw, where I actually go into detail about branding and why that's important for your business. If you wanna go check that out, Link in the description. We got these made on Sticker Mule. It was super simple to do. You just upload your file onto the package and then they print them and ship them. They were having a sale and I got a bunch of these really inexpensive. You can also have custom boxes made, places like Pack Lane, Box Genie. There's tons of services out there. Just search custom mailer boxes and you'll find them. Uh, we're actually fixing to order some from Pack Lane for our board butter orders that are more than say four or five of them. That way when we get bulk orders, they still get a nice package instead of just something simple and plain. The custom boxes do cost a lot extra. You're talking two to $3 per box. Now, it just depends on what you're selling. If you're selling a cutting board, you can absorb that cost a little easier than, than say if you're shipping mallet templates, board butter, stuff like that, because it's a smaller, lower cost item, it's harder to absorb that cost, unless you're selling in bulk. But with those custom box companies, you can actually customize what's on top, what's on the inside. You can really go to town on your, on your customization and really up, level up your branding message when your customer receives your box. And if you're like us, you receive dozens of boxes a week from Amazon and other places where we're ordering online more and more. And 99% of them are just plain brown boxes that they're just boring. And when they, you know, somebody gets your product, you want them to be like, wow, excited. You want them to get excited when they see your product. And that way you start an emotional response and they want to order from you again. For buying stickers, labels, things like that for your product, packing tape, 
those mailers with the custom printed logos on there. Sticker Mule by far is the one I found to be the best as far as quality and the price you're paying for it. So the reason we was trying to reduce the cost on those stickers and labels, so we went with another company called Uprinting. And when we got the order in, despite all the negative reviews, we did it anyway. We got a thousand stickers in and they look nothing like the ones from Sticker Mule and we uploaded the exact same file. Sticker Mule, you can see the lines go edge to edge. They look much better. Whereas Uprinting, the, there's a, they basically just printed our logo inside of an oval and they didn't center it and a lot of them are Wampy Jaw. So what are we supposed to do with a thousand Wampy Jaw stickers? Well, Miss 731 puts them in the, your survival kit when you get one and they're called a Wampy Jaw sticker. Uh, just kind of a way to use those. We did get some of the money back from this order, but because we were just gonna keep them and use them, so we just kind of bit the bullet and kept those. I'll be ordering from Sticker Mule from now on for our stickers. These are both the uh, Outlaw Board Butter labels. This left one is a Sticker Mule label and the one on the right is the U printing label. And you can see that there's a little bit more distance between that black line and the outside. And then also you may not notice a little bit of discoloration there. That's because these labels are quite a bit thinner and less durable feeling. These have a more uh, durable glossy type feeling coat on there. They just overall a better quality label from Sticker Mule. I'm not start sponsored by Sticker Mule. I'm just sharing my experiences with you. And I found that their quality has been top notch for me. If you want to give Sticker Mule a try for your stuff, I'll put a link in the description. It'll actually give you $10 off your first order. That'll help you reduce the cost of some of your product. I also ship and sell mallet templates on the website. And because these are MDF, they will break pretty easily. What we do is wrap them in bubble wrap as well. And the good thing about this bubble wrap is it's perforated every 12 inches. I just take two and then I just wrap them up like this, tape that, and then that will go in a package. Now it has to be in one of the bigger bubble mailers. That way it fits. So far I've had only a couple broken out of the hundreds that I've sold. So this is a pretty good way to go. Pretty much with any shipping service, you pretty much know that there's going to be damages at some point if you ship enough stuff. So you just kind of have to think about that and figure that in. It's extremely difficult to package a product that'll never get damaged without costing you a whole lot of extra. And it's one of those costs versus return. If this gets broken in transport, I really hate it for the customer. We always ship them another one right away, but this is a good way to ship small things like this. Anytime I have to ship MDF mallets or any other wood product. I always use a fragile sticker like this. They're one, I put one on each side. What I have noticed with these is I get many, many, many less broken items if I put these on there. If I forget, it will get crushed or broken. So I really do think, or I want to believe that they're taking extra care when they see the fragile sticker. I hope. Anytime I ship wooden items like this catch-all tray, this baseball. The first thing I do for putting them into the package or a box is I'll, I use this tissue paper or it's packing paper and wrap that a little neater than this sometimes. And then tape this up and then wrap bubble wrap around that. That keeps anything from scuffing and scratching your products before they get to the customer. For larger items, say you're shipping cutting boards, charcuterie boards, any, anything other than these small items like that, that are fair size. You can buy boxes from Uline or many other places online. Even Amazon has shipping boxes that you can purchase. You have to figure those into the cost of your product because boxes ain't cheap. The actual cardboard's cheap, but the shipping costs when you start ordering bundles of boxes is what adds up pretty quickly. The great thing about this tape is it comes on a roll. It's packing tape. It's made for this stuff. It's made for like cardboard boxes and things. I like to cut that there's full logo so they don't have a half logo. It's kind of weird. It's just me. Take a paper towel, just dampen the back of this stuff. It doesn't take much at all before it starts getting really sticky. I just got a wet paper towel. And then when you seal your box up, you're using your own branded packing tape. And when somebody, when this box arrives on somebody's porch or when it's delivered to them, they're gonna know exactly who that's from. And the hope is they're excited to see this because it's coming from us and we take value in shipping our products to our customers and we appreciate each one so much. We really want them to be excited when they see our packages arrive at their, at their house. Another thing you may want to pick up is a scale. This is just uh, one I bought off Amazon. I'll link it below. I like about, if this one is, it's in pound and ounces. You can change that to grams or whatever you like. On the side, there's a hold button, which means when I set this package on there, if I can't read that, even if it's too big of a package, I can just reach under, hit the hold button and then move. And it's gonna tell me exactly what the weight is. One pound, 13.4 ounces. I would just round up one pound, 14 ounces and put that in the shipping service that I'm using so it would calculate it correctly. 
I use a service called Shippo to be able to generate postage as well as packing slips for all of our orders. It makes it super simple and there's a few reasons why I chose that service. One, the cost. They're very low cost as a service. You can actually sign up and use it for free. Some of the cost items comes in when you want to do branded stuff like put your branding on your packing slips. I love that we have packing slips now because when I print out my orders, the packing slips are printed as well. That keeps everything organized and it keeps me from confusing who bought what and having to go back and look. Number one reason I use Shippo is time saving because it does connect to our website. You don't have to connect it to a website. You can use it standalone, but it, it automatically pulls in all of our shippable orders. It saves tons and tons of time and time is money in business. And if I can take just a few minutes to do shipping versus half hour or an hour, that's a huge time savings for me. One, they connect to USPS, FedEx, and UPS and many other services as well. There's discounts for using their service on your postage. So in other words, when I buy postage from uh, through Shippo versus just straight from USPS, I actually get a discount and a good discount to, for just for using their service. Shippo also lets you set up templates for similar packages. So if you're shipping the same thing over and over, you can just click a button, click the drop down. in this case, a mallet template, click that, and it auto populates into a shipping field, the weight and the size, so that it automatically calculates what that postage is gonna to be to your customer. I'm sure there's tons of other services out there, but Shippo works great for us. If you're shipping in volume, or you just like the FedEx or UPS systems, then you can always sign up with them with a small business account. With those small business account, UPS and FedEx both offer discounts for shipping, and you can sign up on each of their websites. Fragile, am I right? Now there are limits to how much you can ship with different services. USPS is who I use because it's all I got here locally. 70 pounds is the max you can ship with USPS and the package can't be over 108 inches altogether, which means length, width, height, everything. With UPS and FedEx, both offer up to 150 pounds per piece shipping. And then also the max size can be up to 165 inches length, width, height. A while back, I did make a video. It's in my Etsy video. If you wanna check that out about selling on Etsy, about how to package bigger products like our stove covers, which were significantly bigger at about 30 inches wide, a lot of times 20 to 25, 26 inches deep, and then probably three or four inches tall. We still use USPS, but we custom made boxes. You can watch that in that video, I'll link it below. A lot of people ask how to ship large items like furniture. You can still get away with shipping UPS or FedEx, sometimes USPS, if you package it properly and the item is actually small enough say nightstands, end tables, things like that. You're still gonna pay a premium on the shipping because the product's gonna be larger and heavier, so you have to calculate that into the cost of your items. If you're trying to sell coffee tables, dining tables, stuff like that, that you're shipping long distances, freight shipping is probably gonna be your best bet. And with freight shipping, you're gonna have to package that up and you're gonna have to basically build a crate around it from what I understand so that it's protected during transport if you're shipping it assembled. Keep in mind that if you are freight shipping something, the cost will increase significantly over using UPS, FedEx, or USPS for the smaller items. We're talking in the hundreds of dollars for shipping versus 10 to $50, depending on the size of your product for the smaller items. If you can find a way to flat pack, a lot of people are using CNC's to flat pack their products. In other words, they, they come in a flat box and then you assemble it Ikea style. Then, then you can still ship with the other services and not have to use the freight shipping. What's great about USPS here locally is I can schedule a pickup the day before. So all the orders that come in that day, that night, I go onto the USPS website and schedule the pickup here at my home address. That's an excellent service that USPS offers and I use it almost every day for them to pick up products. It depends on if you can trust your neighbors and people that drive through your neighborhood, whether you wanna do this or not, but this is how I do it because it makes it easier on the mail person and it doesn't take as much time as the other day. And I already know that it's gonna be okay because my office is right there and I can see it the whole time. That's how we do it. If you don't have an online presence where you're selling your products, whether that be Etsy or your own website or some other place, I highly encourage you to do it. I've been preaching for years to diversify your income. It is almost a necessity in today's world if you want to have a profitable business to be able to put your stuff out there to the, for the world to be able to buy it. I've been thinking about doing a video on how to set up a website from start to finish so you can sell your products. If you're interested in that video, comment below and let me know so I know if there's enough interest to do it. If you like this video, go check out the Etsy video right there. It's gonna teach you how to sell on Etsy and ship and package some things there. Click that box, get you the big old virtual fist pump. Also, you can check out my new channel, all the branding tips right there.